there will be the time of the great tribulation. And who asks which poet has language? And which writer has language? Which scribe has the language? Which journalist has the language? And which orator has the language to be able to describe to you the agony and the suffering and the pain that will take place in this world for the people that go through the great tribulation? As I read some of the passages to you, it is uh, shocking and it is, it is very pain. It, it even pains your heart as you, are, as you are reading the account. It is going to be a terrible thing. And I pray that you will not be in the world at such a time in Jesus' name. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 51 and verse 52. 1 Corinthians 15, then verses 51 and 52. Behold, I show you a mystery. Behold, I show you a mystery. Whenever you read anything like that in the New Testament, a mystery is something that had been hidden from the people of the past generation, but now revealed to the people of this church age. Revealed to the people of this church dispensation. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. We shall all be changed in a moment. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. It says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Do you know that there will be no time to make restitution at that time? Do you know that there will be no time to repent and say, Oh Lord, the rapture is taking place. Brother so and so is gone. Sister so and so is gone. Let me, oh Lord, uh, get ready uh, so that I will not uh, miss the rapture. It will be in a moment. In a twinkling of an eye. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, Jesus said, He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. You see, as we had in the morning, there will be temptation. But temptation is not sin. But when you yield to that temptation, then that is sin. And there are people that have yielded to temptation. Can you imagine as we're here now? You've been here, some of you have been here since Monday. And you have the chance to have repented if you have gone into sin. You have the chance to make right your life if things have gone wrong. But message after message, message after message, and you're still saying, I will repent. I will think about it. I will settle it eventually because if I pray seriously now and I begin to pray fervently and uh, I may not be able to control myself and I begin to utter some things to the Lord while we're here together, other people might hear and they will say, ah, so and so, is she a backslider? Why is she praying like that? So and so, is she gone astray? Has she uh, offended the Lord? Has she forsaken the Lord? Why is she praying like that? Because of that shame, you're still keeping it to yourself. But I'm telling you that when the rapture is going to take place. And who knows when the rapture is going to take place? We don't know. Because it will happen any time. And it can happen any time from now. Now, there's no time to, uh, to go into all the things that have taken place as Jesus Christ has said. But if I were just to refresh your memory, when he talks about the famine, don't you know that half of the world is not able to feed itself now? As he talks about drought, haven't you heard the news in southern part of Africa, in Zambia, in Zimbabwe, in Mozambique, and in Angola, in a lot of the countries? Don't you know in uh, Zaire, and don't you know in many countries now, and apart from Africa, don't you know what is going on even in the West? Yes, there are, there are droughts. Don't you know about the earthquakes? In the last 50 years, we've had more earthquakes than the whole world has had before the, in all the generation before 50 years ago. It's telling us something. The children of God, the time is almost up. The Lord is about to come. And if you are going to get ready, this is the time to get ready. And as you think about the false prophets, because Jesus Christ said, many will come in my name, even declaring that they are Christ. Have you not seen that in our country here? Have you not seen that in Nigeria? Have you not seen that in West Africa? Have you not seen that in southern part of Africa when it says there will be false prophets and they will deceive many? Before you can get one true prophet today, you have hundreds of false prophets. And when you think about that, you think about all the things that Jesus said. And Jesus said, children of God, be very vigilant when you see these things happening. Know that the rapture and know that the time of the things I spoke about, they are very near at hand, very much near at the door. 
And so it is very important for us to know that the Lord can come anytime. And it will be in the moment, in a moment, a twinkling of an eye, that the trumpet will sound. And then those who are ready, they will go with the Lord. And the people that are not ready, they are going to be left behind. Now, after the church has gone like that, when the church is taken away, and you are in the azure above, A-Z-U-R-E, you are in the azure above, and you are just like that with the Lord in the marriage supper of the Lamb, because the wife had made herself ready, has put on the white linen, for the white linen is the righteousness of the saints. And blessed are they who are qualified to come to the marriage supper of the Lamb, will rejoice with the Lord. That's Revelation chapter 19. What will be happening when the children of God, the raptured saints, the people of God who have gone up with the Lord, when they are with the Lord like that, what will be happening in the world here below? That leads us to the second point, which is the great tribulation. The great tribulation. I told you earlier that it is called the great tribulation because it will be great. And uh, when we talk about tribulation, Israel will understand. You see, we who are uh, the children of God now in Africa here, many times when we talk about tribulation, we don't understand. Because, you see, many of the things we read about in the Bible, it is surprising to us. But for the children of Israel, it was not like that. Now, uh, I traced with you a little bit what had been happening to the children of Israel from the early time of their history. You've seen the, uh, you've seen the Egyptian bondage, the iron ponies that they went through. And you, you have seen that it is like real fire coming upon them. Not only that you have seen in the case of Assyria beseeching Samaria and beseeching the children of Israel. You know, it says that they were, and they were shut in. Nobody could go out and nobody will come in. And because of the prophecy that had been given, Moses told them in um, Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 51 to verse 53, he said, if you go away from the Lord and you go to serve the idols and you go to join yourself with the people of the land, he said from verse 15 that these will come upon you. There will be curse in the house, there will be curse in the street, and there will be, confu there will be confusion, there will be consummation, there will be inflammation, there will be, it, there will be boils, there will be a lot of things. And then in verse 52, 53, he began to tell them, it will become so serious that even those who are delicate among you will begin to take your own children and roast and, and eat and boil and eat. You see, the children of Israel, they had gone through tribulation. I'm sure you remember in the time of Elisha when somebody cried, a woman cried to the king and said, King, oh king, save me. And he says, where will I save you? Into the barn or what do I have to provide for you? And then she said, he said, what is your problem? He said, I am this other woman. We agreed that uh, first of all, because of the famine, because of the difficulty, we will eat my son first and then we ate my son. And then the second day I said, now bring your own and she's hiding her own. That was tribulation. And the king of Israel said, What is all this that God do so to me if the head of Elisha is not taken away today? And then while they were coming to Elisha, you may know the story. It says, this, uh, this evil is from the Lord. A time of real terrible things that the Lord even told them that you will, you will eat the dung of animals. And they even began to sell the dung of the animals. So yes, the new tribulation, the new trouble. But I'm telling you something, the tribulation that is coming... It has no comparison. History tells us that when, you know, at the time of the Second World War, that when the, the Jews were being killed, millions of them were killed. And they were killed in very agonizing, terrible ways. That is tribulation. And as you read, if you are able to read the history of the suffering of the children of Israel, they have gone through a lot in their history. Real trouble, real trial, real traumatic situations, and real tribulation. But then Jesus said, the one that is coming, you cannot compare it with anything that has taken place before. That is why, even if it were just for you to avoid the great tribulation, do everything you can do. Do everything you can do so that you will escape the great tribulation. You know, sometimes uh, when I move around and I see some churches where they are not teaching their people holiness and they are not teaching their people how to live righteous life, I think as I read some of the passages, uh, you know, that we are going to read tonight, I think all these pastors who are teaching their people and they are playing with religion and it is only drumming and dancing and only drinking Fanta and drinking Coke that they call the Lord's Supper. 
and uh, you know, doing this and that, I shake my head and I say, it will be terrible on that day. It will be terrible on that day. You know, brothers and sisters, I pray you will not be around at that time. That you will escape that great, 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 great tribulation. Uh, you see, you, will, you cannot understand just by reading it. The only thing is that you must not go through it. It will be a terrible time. Look at what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, we're looking at it from verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world. Such as was not since the beginning of the world to that time, nor no, nor ever shall be. You see, it says that time is a special time. The time of the great tribulation, great suffering, great agony, great evil coming upon the people. You may ask, why will it be like that? Well, a number of reasons. Number one, the church will have been taken away. Do you know what the Bible says? Ye are the salt of the earth and ye are the light of the world. And when the salt has been taken away, there will be pollution, there will be corruption. Not only that, when the light has been taken away, there will be darkness. Last night you were listening to setting the captives free. And you listen to how people get involved with all these demonic activities. And when you listen to some of those activities of demons who said, What? How about this? And how about this? But I tell you, at that time when the light of the world is taken away, and the salt of the earth is taken away, it will be the day for demons to exercise all their cruelty, all their evil, all the satanic nature within them. They will just fill the land without any control, without any restraint. Because to see the church would have been taken away. Not only that, why will the great tribulation be the thing that it is? Because the wrath of God will be poured upon the world. There is no time to read, but you can read on your own Revelation chapter 6, chapter 7, all through to chapter the beginning of chapter 19. And you will see the wrath of God being poured away as this veil was opened, and the wrath of God was poured upon the place, and the, and the third part of the sea became blood, and the fish that was in them all died and began to sink, and the third part of the sheep that had been on those seas, they were destroyed, and all those travelers by sea, you see all those evil things happening to them. You come to Revelation chapter 9 and it says the bottomless pit will be open and the locusts will come out and the locusts will be commanded not to eat grass or any green thing but they will be stinging men and their sting is like that of a scorpion that no penicillin injection or any kind of injection will be able to get rid of. It says that the pain of that a locust biting them will continue for five months. They will seek death and they will not find it. Why you see that the great tribulation will be a terrible time? Number one, because the salt of the earth has been taken away. The light of the world has been taken away. Number two, because the wrath of God will be poured upon the world. Number three, because the Antichrist will be in the world at that time. And if you read Daniel chapter 7, chapter 8, and chapter 9, you, and, uh, and chapter 11, you will see the wrath of uh, the Antichrist coming upon the people. He would have made an agreement, a covenant, a league with the children of Israel at the middle of the, of the week, that is at the middle of seven years, he will break that covenant. And because of the breaking of that covenant, there will be terrible things happening. If you now go to Revelation chapter 13, it tells you that at such a time, they, they will be a mark, the mark of the beast, 666. And the people that take that mark are the only people that will be able to go to the market and buy anything and buy any food. And if you don't take that mark, then you will not be able to buy or sell. You will not be able to have any food at all. And if anybody takes that mark, it's doomed, it's sealed forever. It's going to be a terrible time. Terrible because the church is gone. Terrible because God comes out of his place and he comes to fight against the children of men. Terrible because the Antichrist in all his cruelty and wickedness and power will come to afflict the people in the world. And so you see it from all those three directions and you see the agony, you see the suffering and you see the tribulation that will come upon the people of the world at such a time. That's why Jesus Christ said, For then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world. 
Now, when you think of what has been since the beginning of the world, and you take the words of Jesus Christ serious, and he said, such as has not been, has not been since the beginning of the world, it is going to actually be a terrible time. In Jeremiah chapter 30, Jeremiah chapter 30, reading from verse 5 all through to verse 7. For that, for thus says the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling and of fear and not of peace. Ask ye now and see whether a man does travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his sons to his loins as a woman in travail? And all faces are turned into paleness, alas, for that day. Uh, alas, for that day is, is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. It is the time of Jacob's trouble, but he, referring to Jacob, shall be saved out of it. Now when it says uh, Jacob shall be saved out of it, don't say, ah, well, if Jacob will be saved out of it, then there is hope for me. Well, understand, when it says Jacob shall be saved out of it, you have to see all the other scriptures in Isaiah. And the scripture also in uh, Zechariah and the scriptures too in Romans. And it tells us that all Israel shall be saved. But when it says all Israel shall be saved, that is all the Israel that remain alive. All the Israel that will be able to remain till the end of the great tribulation. And another part says just one third of them will remain. Because there will be so much suffering, so much pain. In fact, they will begin to cry for their Messiah, that they deserve the nations will come. Because of that, you realize that when it says Israel shall be saved, it shall be saved out of it. It is only a part of them, the people that have not died, that will be saved out of them. You say, how about the uh, Gentile world? Let's say, uh, you know, there are people here today, and uh, they miss the rapture. And when they, once they know that the rapture has taken place, and uh, I've told you already, the rapture can take place anytime. And you know, there are times uh, in days, our short lives, where it appears that some people thought the rapture was taking place. Uh, you know, there was a time that uh, something happened just to, God was just uh, wanting to warn an individual. He was in the room like this, and there was another person in the, in the sitting room, and uh, something happened, not rapture actually, uh, but uh, he didn't see that uh, brother. And he went to the back of the house, and he went to all the rooms, and went everywhere, where is brother so-and-so? He went outside to see, and brother so-and-so was not there. God just arranged it in such a way like that, and the brother became afraid, and said, as the rapture happened, as the rapture taking place, and uh, he began to pray immediately. And he settled what he had to settle with the Lord. And then after that, he saw that brother. And then his mind came down and said, ah, You are still there? <laughs> I prayed my eyes out already. I thought that uh, you were gone in the rapture. You see, that was just warning. But you see, when the rapture takes place, and these people are left here, it's going to be terrible. There may be people that will say, I will endure. I will endure. Well, you know, today, if you try to fast one day, by 3 o'clock, 3.30 and 4 o'clock, you are looking at the time and you say, am I going to be able to get through? Because it's hard to fast. And then if you want to go three days without water and without food, by the time you go to the second day, and by the time you are getting to the third day, it appears you don't know whether you are going to be able to sail through that third day. But at that time of the Great Tribulation, you will not be able to get food to buy. There will be a number. And right now, technology has developed in overseas to the point that they can put something on you that can only be read by the computer. To the point that you don't have to carry a passbook, that you can just carry a little uh, card like this and you slot it in and it gives you uh, the detail of what money you have there, what money you don't have there. The people of the world are getting ready. To the point that they can put that mark on you and then you'll be able, if you are going to, they say, have you got your mark? You have not got your mark. And then they can test by all their gadgets and everything. But I thank God that when that thing will be fully developed, I will not be here. And you need to pray that you will escape, you will not be here. But if it happens that you are here, it's going to be terrible. 
You know what the Bible says? The Bible says, if you have run with horsemen, if you have run with ordinary people, they worry you. What will you do when you now come to run with horsemen? If in the ordinary time you are troubled, what will you do at the swelling time of the tide of Jordan? If at this time with little persecution, with little trouble, with little uh, tribulation, with little, little things that are taking place, you easily get discouraged. What are you going to do at that time? No counselor will be around. At least the true ones. No pastor will be around the true ones. And even the Bible, you will, how will you understand today if you read the Bible on your own? It is when you come into the fellowship, you come to the congregation, that you are able to understand the real meaning, the enriching meaning of the word of God. At that time, it will not be free. You will not be free to have just any church anywhere. You will be having congregation like this. The messengers of the Antichrist will come in and say, stop all that. How many of you have got your marks? And they begin to check up with their gadgets and the people that have not got that mark, they will beat them mercilessly before they send them to go and get the mark. And if you say you are not going to take the mark, it is going to be suffering. It is going to be suffering. And these people of the world, they know how to torture people. The only thing is that you should not be here at that time. Now, why should people remain here? And what makes them remain here? Because of a little restitution. They have to make restitution with about 5,000 cities. They, can, they don't want to do it because of the shame. Not because they don't have the money, but because of the shame. Or it is that uh, when you were planning your marriage, you had already met one another uh, before the real wedding. If I go to make restitution and I confess to our pastor, they may stop me. Uh -uh, stopping you. What is that? That is nothing compared with the great tribulation. Other people say, if I don't give bribes, how will I be able to get job? Ah, if you give bribe and you get job, what if the rapture takes place and you don't go? The suffering that will be taking place in the world at that time, the only thing is that you as a child of God, you should not be here. And I pray you will not be here in Jesus' name. Well, already some of the passages I should have read to you, I've already mentioned them, and I've already quoted them as I was speaking. And I want to go to point number three, which is qualification for the rapture, an escape from the great tribulation. Qualifications for the rapture, and escape from the great tribulation. In Luke chapter 21, in Luke chapter 21 from verse 36, Luke 21, verse 36, Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. It says, you need to watch and you need to pray. You need to watch and you need to pray, so that you will be able to escape all these things that shall come to pass. You see, brothers and sisters, we need to watch. When Esau was not watching, Jacob demanded of him to give him his birthright for a mess of pottage. And if you are not watching, there are situations today that will try to take your birthright from you. And you will say like Esau, I am hungry to the point of death. What will this birthright do me? And you sell your birthright like that. You see, there are times it may be because of marriage. It may be because of children. It may be because of sickness. It may be that, for example, you are sick. And as you are sick, you have tried everything you can try that is permissible. And you have prayed. And it appears the sickness is still there. And then your people might say, Well, as you are like this, why should we just be looking at you like this? And you will just die in our presence like this. Well, although we know that your church will not agree with you, after all, that's your church, they are praying and you are not well yet, and look at you the way you are suffering, and uh, the medication or spiritual has not been able to help you. So, uh, why don't we take you to such and such a place at the back side of the village, in a shrine, so that they will do this and do, ah, you say, if I do that, it means backsliding. They will say, but look at the suffering, look at what you are going through. Can't you repent after that has taken place? There are people that have gone like that to take all those things. And while they are there, they die in the place of the herbalist. And there are people who will come back to the church and say, hey, your brother has died. And uh, then uh, the church begins to debate. And some people say, let us take our stand. So that it will teach other people lessons. That if anybody backslides and goes to be with the unbelieving people and dies in the herbalist place, that this church will not bury the individual. 
other people will rise up and say, let us be careful of what we're doing because see who is going to die has died. And uh, all his relatives, if we have the funeral for them, never minding what the other fellow has done, that may make them to come to our church. And that may make them, if we care and if we love and if we, go, if we forget standard and forget doctrine and forget, you know, to serve this one as a deterrent to other people, let's forget all that and let us rally around at this time. Because you know that burial and funeral is a very serious thing in our country. Well, the church may even compromise and they bury such individual. But I tell you, that individual is going to the negative, to the left side, to hell fire. Because he died with a soul given to the herbalist. And so that is why we need to be careful. It says watch and pray. We need to watch. Because you see this is a difficult time. Not only in your country. It's a difficult time. All over Africa. You see war has been going on for more than 15 years in Mozambique. What are we going to say? There are believers too there. We even have deeper life there. I just saw the National Overseer from Mozambique, uh, you know, just last week. And with joy, he was telling me of how things are taking shape there, how people are getting converted. And you'll be surprised, some of the things we sent to them, like even cases, like this, like that, they don't even see them. Because, you see, when it gets to the place, because of the one, because of everything, they take everything from them. They just take everything and distribute on their own. And so, they are not able to even receive anything, and they are in that war-torn country. And yet, there are people there, they are enduring now. But you know, all that is nothing compared with the great tribulation. Watch, and don't say, look at the condition in our country. Because of this condition, maybe we have to do this that we are not doing before. We have to do this that we are not doing before. It's just like what our pastor was explaining to us just now at the question time. Because of this difficult situation in which we are now, there are some pastors that will say, well, things are hard now. And if we don't get vigilance, uh, they will become vigilant upon these people. Uh, what, what will I eat as a pastor? And so they have all this list upon paper. And, uh, you know, they give to the secretary and say, everyone here, whether they are born again or not, once they are coming to this church, they must bring that thing. You know that thing? Okay, and so the secretary will say, what's your name? How much did you put there? A mark. A mark. A mark. I don't know whether the ones they don't mark, they will, on Sunday, they will give me those names. The ones that you have not marked. So and so, wait behind. Have your debt to pay. And so we announce here, we announce here, we announce here, we announce there. And then we call them. What is it you are stealing from God? And stealing from the church? And you have not paid your tithe. We have not seen your record. So during this week, let us see your hand, not empty hand, and go and mark your register. You see, because of the conditions, let us watch upon ourselves. It may be we say it is because I'm suffering. It is because of hunger. It is because of poverty. My brothers and sisters, watch and pray. Let us watch on all our actions. You know, if there's anything the church needs to watch, it is this, our mouth. This, our mouth, can take us away from heaven and take us to hellfire. This, our mouth alone, can spoil all our consecration. This, our mouth, can gossip about Moses, can gossip about Aaron, can gossip about anyone and everyone. If we're not watching over our mouth, do you know that uh, we're told that the men, they speak 25,000 words every day. And women speak 30,000 words every day. Well, they have more number. They have more to tell. There are many, many things they are thinking about. And many of those 25,000 words and 30,000 words, they are words that lead us astray. We are either criticizing so-and-so, gossiping about that our sister in the choir, gossiping about those people that are planning their wedding. Let us watch over our mouths. Watch and pray. Now the prayer we are talking about here that Jesus was talking about, it is not, oh God, I have a headache, heal me. A person can get healed and still go to hell. Watch and pray. Pray that you will overcome temptation. Pray that you will endure to the very end. Pray that whatever is happening, nothing will take you out of this place. Uh, you know, even if you are not allowed to be a preacher in a church like this, just to allow you to come and sit down, and hear the word of God. That should be enough. 
to prepare you for the rapture. You know, there are some people that will say, well, uh, why am I going to that church? The, the roster of preaching never gets to me. And if they're going to call people to do this and that, it never gets to me. And so, I am going to go to another place. Watch and pray. Pray over that tendency to run here and run here and run there and rush there. You know, there are people, they are attracted by what is going on outside the fence. They see that uh, probably there are some people that are able to gather crowd. And these people will have large, large meetings. And these people are interested. They are in deeper life here. They say, well, look at my congregation. Only 50, only 76, only uh, 82 that are here. And you know all these other people that are ministering. They have large, large crowd. I want to go and find out how they get their large crowd. And then we write uh, a little letter to our overseer. We say, overseer, I thank the Lord for all the time I've been in deeper life. I praise the Lord for all that you have taught me. I've learned a lot from your life. I've learned a lot from your administration. I've learned a lot from everything you are doing. But now God is giving me a call. And this call, the Lord has shown me, it cannot be fulfilled here. I want to go and fulfill it outside the fence. And then you, the overseer will call you and say, My brother, we offended you. Is there, is there something that we have done which you don't want to tell us about? In what way have we treated you? So no, it's not at all. In fact, I appreciate you. I remember the time you cared for me. The remember the time you cared for this and cared for that. Only that God is giving me a call. And this call cannot be fulfilled here. Because, you know, the reason why the call cannot be fulfilled here, because all those things that are done to gather crowds together, is not done here. Because we don't allow the people to have the license to wear all these things the Bible goes against, or to pump their air, or to have all this worldliness and everything, and to bring all the drums, and to bring all the things that will attract the young people. We want to let the word of God and the spirit of God to attract the people. Because you are thinking, if I do that in the church, if I allow those people their jewelry and I baptize them in water, if I allow this one and that one, they are going to get me into trouble. Therefore, the way I can come out of it is that I have received a call. And then you go. And the first time you go, all those people that have been seeing gathering crowd, you go and interview them. You say, uh, how does somebody join your ministry? How does somebody walk along with you? I've been coming from deeper life. The moment they hear that you are coming from deeper life, they won't interview you. They say, have this church immediately. And then you relax. Watch. Many people have gone like that. And they will say, pray for me. If things are not okay, God knows I'm sincere. I will come back. At least for now, I believe I have the call of God. If things are not like that again, I will come back. Many people who promise they will come back, they have not come back. And we see them. You see them. And you're told, you say, brother, things are not working well, you know it. I see some of the people you are moving with, things are not working well. And you say the things are not working well, you will come back. And you will be saying, hey, it doesn't matter. Is it only deeper life that will get to heaven? No, it's not only deeper life. It's not even everybody in deeper life that will get to heaven. But if in deeper life, where we emphasize the Bible and preach everything. If not everybody gets to heaven, what's going to happen outside the fence? If the, if the righteous can't let be saved, what will be the end of the people that are not even righteous? If those of us that all the time there's workers retreat, there's general retreat, there is everything. If all of us are not able to make it, you tell me where there's no workers retreat, where there's no general retreat, where there's no discipline, where there's nothing at all. If we are, we are strict like this, we still get people who can backslide. What is happening in the places where they're not strict? The majority are gone away from the kingdom of God and they don't even know it. My brother, watch your life. You see, as a preacher, I have to watch myself. Because you see, if you don't watch yourself, do you remember Moses? That's why I watch myself. Moses was that great, great man of God. And then the people were thirsty, they wanted water. And the first time he gave them water according to the word of God. And then eventually, do you know what happened? Here was Moses. And then here were the people asking for water. And here was the rock. And God said, speak to the rock. And Moses forgot himself. We can forget ourselves. You see, when there is turbulence in your heart, when there is anger in your heart, 
When there is something displeasure in your heart, you can forget yourself. And then he lifted up the rod and struck it two times and said, You rebels shall we bring water out of the rock for you? Water came out. Miracle is no problem. If you are looking at it on the miracle side, after I see the power of God with me, that's not the final thing. And after the people drank water, then God called Moses and said, Moses, can I tell you something? Because of that thing, you will not get to that land. And Moses said, God, don't be strict like that, sorry. Don't do like that to me. It's these people. And Moses said he fasted again 40 days. How many days can you fast? And even after those 40 days, God said, Moses, all I can do for you. Come up, look at the land, get on this mountain, see it, but that's all. And he died, and then God buried him there. Watch yourself, watch yourself. Do you remember Samson? Here was Samson with the great mighty power of God upon his life. And with the mighty power upon his life, he began to just, you know, dabble into things. And eventually he went into this place, you know the story. And this man of God, with the power of God, leaned his own head. Think about it. The head of the Nazarite. Leaned it upon the lance of that woman until this woman shaped the air. With the help of those Philistines, shaped the air away. And all the power was gone. Watch yourself. You have to watch yourself. Look at Gideon. Gideon was that individual that had this great mighty success. And while he defeated those people, then he took their idol and came back to his land. Great mighty victory, but when he was coming back, he came back with idol. Watch yourself. You see Peter, the apostle, he said, If all men deny you, I will never deny you. Watch your boasting. Because we are told, even a little maid came and said, You are one of them. And they began to curse. Somebody who had been to the Mount of Transfiguration. Somebody who had walked on the sea. Somebody who had distributed the multiplied food. He began with an oath to say, If I ever knew him, watch yourself. The mighty are falling already. Who am I and who are you? But you know, if you are watching yourself, and always holding on to the cross and saying, God, I want to make it. They may knock me in this church. They may discipline me in this church. They may rebuke me in this church. They may quote the Bible at me. In this. They may even use me as an example. And even quote my name and my region and my location. And mention my name. And even announce my name. But Lord, I will never leave the foot of the cross. Even when I'm humiliated. Even when I'm bent low. Even when it appears, all things are all against me. Lord, I'm not looking for position. I'm only looking for heaven. I know it will be over one day when the trumpet shall sound. All our tears will be over. All our suffering will be over. All the discipline will be over. All the training will be over. And then shall we rise and we'll go with the Lord. We don't know when that day will be. But then we remember the song Number three, in our own hymn book, Impatient Heart, Be Still. What though the Lord tarries long, we know that he will, it will, he will come one day. It says, my eager heart, my anxious heart, be still. It may not be today, and yet my soul it may. It may be in the morning or at noon, whenever it will be, I know he will surely come to take me to his home. And because I know he will take me to his home, I want to be patient now. In my marriage, I want to be patient in my wanting to become a pastor, wanting to become this and that, I want to be patient. In wanting children, I want to be patient. In wanting salary, I want to be patient. In wanting this, I want to be patient. In patient heart, be still. The Lord is coming. And we don't know when that Lord will come. But my prayer for you is that whenever it will be, you will be ready in Jesus' name. What a, what a joy it will be on that wonderful and final day. If as the rapture takes place like this, we're all caught up. I may not be here, I may be in Nigeria, some of you may be in Liberia, some of you may be in the Gambia, some of us may be in other places. And immediately the rapture takes place like this, and the first thing we're looking for, where is brother so-and-so? 
Where is that sister in the choir? Where is that interpreter over there? Where is that person that used to walk in the kitchen? Where is that person that used to play the organ? Where is that person that used to help us record in all these things? What joy it will be at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. I see those brothers. I see those sisters. I see those interpreters. I see everyone. And we, we, we look at the road when the road is called up yonder. And those overseers, I say, where is that overseer? Where is that overseer? And then then we're all there and there were tears of joy in our faces. We begin to say all the tribulation and all the persecution and all the poverty and all the evil things that we went through did not stop us from getting to that place. We don't know when it will be but my prayer for you is that you'll be ready in Jesus name. And I want you to rise up and you tell the Lord you want to be ready for that glorious day. You want to be ready for that wonderful time. Because that will be the final result of our worshiping God. Let's get ready for that time. Let's get ready for that time. Let's get ready for that time.